Hello and welcome to this video on how to use Grammarly's extension which can be embedded into Word as a way to help grade papers. So let's take a trip through time and imagine back in the day students would hand a piece of paper to the teacher, the teacher would pull out their red pen, they would mark up the errors and then hand it back to the student so that the student could see what they are doing incorrectly. All right, well, we can basically do the same thing using technology and a lot quicker. Um, so here's how we're gonna do this. So here is a poorly written paper. So let's say I had a student submit this paper to me. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the paper in a Word document, because um, I require all my students to use uh, Word, uh, submit things as a document. Um, if they use Google Docs, if they use Mac or OpenOffice, they can still save it as a doc file. Um, so that's just a little heads up. So anyway, anyway, let's get to it. So the trick as far as grading using Microsoft Word, and there's a whole bunch of videos out there using the under the review tab and track changes. Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to the review tab, turn on track changes. Now track changes has a few different options. There's a simple markup, there is all markup, no markup, and original for the sake of this video for right now, we're just gonna stay with simple markup. Okay, and I'm gonna show why that's important in a second. So once I have got their paper, I've turned on track changes. And what track changes does, basically, if you're not familiar with it, so let's say I add um, something here. Um, okay, now you'll notice as soon as I added the, the, the number two here, this red line appeared. What? What does that mean? That means that there has been a change made to this line. And it tracked it. It showed, hey, look, you made a change. Now, it just doesn't show you necessarily what the change was made because we're in simple markup. But if I were to change this to all markup, then it highlights it in red and says, hey, this is a change that you made. Oh, oh, okay. So if we go back to simple markup, then it doesn't necessarily show you specifically. It just shows you that there was a change on that line. Okay, and again, there's a whole other video, uh, plenty of tutorial videos about track changes, but I want to show you how you can use Grammarly when it comes to grading. So let's get rid of that too. So again, I've installed Grammarly and I've got it as an extension, which is added to Microsoft Word. Again, there are plenty of videos out there that show you how to do that. That is not the point of this video. This video is to show you how to use it as far as to help you grade. So I've turned on my little Grammarly thing over here and I'm gonna open it up and it's gonna search through here and it's gonna connect. Now, I've done a couple of things in this video to demonstrate that Grammarly is very helpful as a tool, but it does not replace human beings, okay? It uh, makes some recommendations, it can make some things, but it doesn't catch everything. So let's go ahead and just kind of look at this. So again, if I review back here to track changes, I've tracked changes, and it will show me, okay, so let's run through Grammarly and it's show me over here the, tests, the things that it recommends that I change. I learned more from failure than success. Okay, I should be than success. Now, if you want to know why, you push the little Chevron button over here, possibly confuse the than with then. So it will kind of give you more information of why that's a thing. So if you're not clear, you're like, oh, okay. Okay, so let's say we want to make that change. If I just click here, it will then replace it. Okay, now again, since we're in simple markup, it doesn't show necessarily that I made a change. But if I go to all markup, then it says, look, you crossed out the word then and added than. So that would show the students, again, that's like the red pen, okay? But for just the sake for us um, just doing this, we'll, actually, we'll just keep it in all markup. Why not? Okay. And let's see what's next thing. Okay. I really don't like to fail. Now, let's see how this is like a yellow line. So this is really more of a suggestion, okay? So it's going to say, you know what? Do you really need, really? Okay. So that may be a way to clear up their writing or make it a little more concise, uh, coherent. So let's go ahead and just say, let's get rid of that. Boop. Cross it out. Um, I really don't like to a uh, fail. Okay, well, I, I think maybe they were trying to write something else and went back and changed their mind, but didn't realize they left the word A in there. So just get rid of that. Okay, but when I fail, okay, now it's got another little line here. It's recommending, hey, you have a missing comma after an introductory clause. Yes, we do. We need an introductory, uh, that's an introductory clause, so we need to have a comma after it. Okay, and then I tries to learn what I did wrong and not do it again. Okay, so let's go ahead and see now. So the problem is if you keep it in all markup, it's still seeing this as an error. So if we put this back to simple markup, then these things should go away, at least in theory. Okay, so let's go, let's see. So I tries to learn what I did wrong. Oh, should be try, I try to learn what I did wrong. Okay, and now it's saying no issues found. But if you just read through this, but when I fail, I try to learn what I did wrong and not do it again. Whoa, 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 what? 
not. Not? Do it again? Okay, that's incorrect. But Grammarly didn't necessarily catch that. So I did that on purpose to show that, again, Grammarly is a good tool to help, but it won't necessarily replace you. Now, it does catch a lot of things. Now, so again, but now, after I have made these changes, I can go ahead and close out Grammarly, okay? And it showed up, I've made a bunch of changes. If I change this back to all markup, then when I send it to the student and save it as with all markup and send it back to the student, they will see their issues. Now, I can also even change that, okay? Okay, so I've made that change. Um, again, there's the, you know, so they can actually go through and accept or reject changes or whatever. Again, these videos on there's a whole bunch of videos on this. This is not a video about track changes. This is about using Grammarly. So this is how you you could absolutely use Grammarly in saving. Now, what helps this as a professor is number one, it goes through and I, I can find all the errors fairly quickly and then clean them up. And then when I go to simple markup after the changes, now I can actually read the essay and focus on the content instead of focusing on all the errors and mistake. Um, because often those are two different things on the rubric, is that we will have one that has the, you know, there should be like, you know, spelling and grammar and mechanics. But then we also want to, you know, grade them looking at the content of what they're trying to say. And that can be very distracting if it's full of mistakes. So now we can actually kind of help separate those two out into two different things. So again, that's a little video that shows you how to use Grammarly um, using the track changes form track changes uh, situation there, little feature in Word um, to help grade papers. I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, share with your friends. All right.